Good morning everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I am in my front yard again, and yes, look at my beautiful crepe myrtle tree. <laughs> just have to show it off every time. Um, so today I'm going to be planting a couple perennials, specifically Shasta daisies. And I already have Shasta daisies in my front yard. I've showed you guys them before. Let me show you a little clip right here. Um, I love them. They are on either side of my lawn or they kind of cap either side of my annual border. And um, they're gorgeous, they're beautiful. I got them at Lowe's on a perennial three for 10 sale. So great deal. So I bought six of them for 20 bucks, which I thought was awesome. And they're one of my favorite flowers, perennials that I have in my garden. However, um, they don't bloom all season. They kind of flush in and out. So they'll flush in and they'll look absolutely beautiful and absolutely gorgeous for a couple weeks. And then I have to shear them back and cut them back down to the leaf canopy. And then they're kind of just like a shrub for a while and then they'll come back you know not as strong as their first um first bloom but you know it's just it's not constant blooms and i really love that pop of white i i, I just feel like they're happy flowers um and so i want them for longer so funny enough last year i found daisy may Proven Winners Daisy May Shasta Daisies at the store. You know, I, was, I happened to be at the plant store and they had one. And so I grabbed it and I planted it. And the thing that I noticed about it was the bloom time of the Daisy May Shasta Daisy was different than the bloom time of the Shasta Daisies that I have, you know, the perennials that I got from Lowe's. Now, I don't know the variety I don't exactly know the variety of the perennials that I got from those. It didn't say, I have a feeling they are the snow cap variety because the normal, um, why can I never remember her name? Betsy? I want to say Betsy variety. <laughs> um, the normal variety is very tall um, and the ones that I have are very short. They stay really close to the leaf canopy and I actually have people stopping by my house and asking me how I keep my Shasta daisies so short and I think it's just the certain variety I have. So I've looked it up and the snow cap variety is supposed to be a shorter version. So I think that's what I have. That's what I'm going for. So my snow cap variety has a different bloom time than the Daisy May Shasta Daisies from Proven Winners. So the idea that I had was what if I mix them together? What if I have the snow caps and then I mix in some of the Daisy May and then I will have a longer bloom time over the season of the Shasta Daisies, which I love and which I want more of. So let me show you the spot that I'm talking about. Okay, so I've already got all my stuff out here. It's very sunny this morning, so it's, it's kind of harsh lighting. Okay, so this little spot right here is where my Shasta daisies are. There's a couple other things like the Liatris that I'm gonna pull out, um, but you can see here, I'm starting to get another flush back here. So see how short those are right next to the leaf canopy? And then the other ones, usually Shasta daisies are kind of really tall. So I really, really like this variety. I also, way over there, I also have another grouping of Shasta daisies that I absolutely love. And again, I've already cut them back. They're starting to flush out a little bit more. There we go, you guys see those? Aren't those cute? I just love them. And then I have a big mass back here. This whole thing is Shasta daisies that I've cut back. And you can see they're starting to get more buds for their second flush of the season. So like I was saying when I was at the nursery last year, I found this plant and I left it. I didn't deadhead it because I wanted to show you guys. Um, so this is the days, the Proven Winners Daisy May Shasta daisies. Same thing, you know, same Shasta daisy, just a different variety. And the thing that I noticed is that it is a different bloom time. So this was bloomed out, it looked really pretty, and then it just kind of just faded. So I need to come in and I need to shear those back. However, it's just so interesting, the bloom times are totally different. So I thought, like I said, if I just mix these in with those, I feel like I'm gonna have a longer bloom time of Shasta daisies exactly where I want it. So here are the flowers I got. I actually bought them online um, on the Proven Winners website and they were sent to me and I'm, I was pretty happy with the shipping this time. It was really, really good. And all of them that they sent to me have buds all over it. Bud there, bud there, bud there. This one's already starting to open, but I think it opened in 
um, <laughs> in transit, so it was a little smashed. Um, so yeah, so they're the Amazing Daisies, Daisy May, full sun, 12 to 24 inches. What zone are these? Let me check. Five to nine. Yep, so perfect for here, and they do so well. They're one of my top five um, favorite plants. I did a video um, with Harmony Hills, Jenny from Harmony Hills, and we talked about our favorite flowers, and this was absolutely one of mine because I love it. So my plan is I'm going to take this old Leatris out. Um, I'm just going to kind of, you know, dot them around. Like I said, there's, there's three here. They've kind of spread. It used to be kind of a small mound. So the Shasta daisies really do spread and I need to divide them. But I'm just gonna kind of dot the other varieties around and then see how that works. See if I can stretch out the amount of bloom time that I have. I have a feeling this will work. I'm really optimistic about it. I had this idea, you know, like, I think I was like watching television or something like that. And I thought, what if I mix both of them together? Wouldn't that be cool? And then immediately bought them online and was super excited about it. So yeah, so I'm gonna get these guys planted and then if I have enough time so <laughs> this breath of heaven needs to be sheared back so badly but just like my uh, Laura Pedlum my Chinese French flower I'm just so nervous about it I don't know why I'm so nervous about it but I do have this breath of heaven over here in my crepe myrtle garden bed and that one I kind of don't I don't know, I don't care as much about as I care about this one. So I think I'm gonna, if I have time today before it gets too hot, I'm gonna try and shear that back into a nice sphere and see how it goes. And then if I feel confident with it, I might attack this one. I don't know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say that and then, and then not do it. It's, I, I have to build up the confidence, <laughs> I think is what I'm doing. So I'll start with that one. Okay, but let's get started with planting the daisies. And a little hummingbird break. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. So that plant that that hummingbird is going to town on is the Rockin' Fuchsia Salvia from Proven Winners as well. But I actually found that one on the clearance rack for a dollar and it looked almost dead. And now I can't kill that plant. Like I do nothing to that plant. I don't even pay attention to it and it just keeps growing. And the hummingbirds absolutely love it. So I think I'm gonna leave it. I think it looks really nice next to the limelights and the hummingbirds. They're always on it. They absolutely love it. Look at these roots. <laughs> Holy cow. So I had a couple of people ask me why I don't like uh, break up the roots before I plant and usually it's because I don't feel like there's enough roots to bother breaking them up with but <laughs> look at this plant <laughs> holy moly so yes I will be breaking up these roots everywhere oh
two more ants. So all the Daisy May Shasta daisies are planted. They look really good. However, I dug six holes this morning and three of them had a mass of ants in them. It's just like miserable. <laughs> it's not fun to garden when you're afraid you're gonna run into ants and getting ants like all over my arms and into my gloves and on my pants and like it's just not fun. So I think I'm gonna scrap the uh, pruning of the breath of heaven today and I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna get some more of that ant bait because I just this is getting out of hand. Right, everyone I am back home I've got my ant bait this is pretty easy they're just stakes so I'm just gonna go stick them all around where I've dug up and had the ants crawling all over me I'm just, <laughs> it's just I'm sick of feeling like I have ants crawling all over me all the time so then I was tempted by the super tunia blue skies I have a perfect place for it I'll show you guys it's this pot that I have kind of in my gated garden and um, there's nothing in there except for weeds at this point. So it'll be really nice to get those blue skies there. I saw those the other day when I was at Home Depot and I was tempted that day and I was strong enough to hold off for one time, not two times. <laughs> so let me get these in the ground and then I'll plant that Super Tunia blue skies. All right, so one over here when I planted the Ever After Veronica. There we go. One over here by this Daisy May Shasta Daisy. This whole thing is just gonna be a recap of all the plants I've planted in the last week. One over here. Oh, actually, I already got one over there. Okay, so that's good. And then a couple over here. Doesn't this Helen von Stein lamb's ear look gorgeous? Oh, I love that. One there. This spot was really bad. Okay. And last one. Right there. Easy peasy. I am embarrassed to even show this to you, but this is my gorgeous pot with weeds in it. I don't even know what kind of weed it is. They're kind of pretty. They have like these little pink blooms on it. <laughs> it's kind of nice, but it's definitely a weed. So um, I'll take this out and I'll put the blue skies right there.
Doesn't that look cute? I love Super Tunia Blue Skies. I love that color. All right, everyone, so that is it for the video today. I got the Daisy May Shasta Daisies in. I think that they are going to be gorgeous with the other Shasta Daisies that I have. I just, I think that that is some smart planting because I think the bloom time is gonna be staggered just enough that I'm gonna get a couple extra weeks of Shasta Daisy blooming, which I love. I love it when they're in bloom. So then I got the ant bait that should be taken care of. I don't know, it's, I mean, it's so frustrating because I don't want to put that kind of stuff in my garden, but but it's, it's just miserable where every place that I dig for like the past week, every single hole I've dug has been like inundated with ants and I've gotten them all over me. So, so I had to do something about it. So that's fine. So tomorrow I am committing to you guys. Tomorrow is pruning day. I'm going to prune my Laura Pedlum, my Chinese fringe flower. I'm going to prune my breath of heaven. Um, and then I'll try and prune a, prune a couple other things. So I will go in and I will sharpen my pruners right now. And you all wish me luck, please. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching. And I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today. 